One size doesn't fit all. <laughs> if you can see, I'm in a Ford Focus on the top. And on the bottom, I'm, I'm in a Suburban. Can you figure out which one I'm actually in that is actually causing me issues and problems? <laughs> I want you to imagine that every kid that comes to your class, every one of them, they have hope. The hope that they can actually learn. And the thing is, it would be bad if we plant a seed and the only seed, there's only one person that actually is learning in our class. Is this your teaching style? Where you're actually teaching and everybody in the classroom is trying to learn the same exact thing that you're teaching it the same way? If this is your class, hmm, I wonder how long does it take for your students to disengage? Are these students of yours? Are they sleeping? What are they doing? It's amazing that when we have kids that disengage, one of the first things they want to do is go to sleep. Do you have kids in your class that when they looked at $10,000 and $40,000, that they thought it was the same thing, the same amount? And for some of us, we think, no, no, that, that is crazy, that's ridiculous, but actually it's not. Is this you? Are you in your classroom after you've taught a lesson and the kids don't get it and you're banging your head up against the wall and you're saying they still don't get this material? Is that you? Hmm. Or is this you? When your kids say something smart and you got a smart comment to come back to. You know, I, I've actually made a few myself, but there's one thing that I've learned when you make a smart comment. Your kids are getting farther and farther away from the truth. Fail, you will. In practice, you won't. I know everyone in here has thought that before. If we don't practice, we're going to fail. If they don't practice, they're going to fail. But the thing about failing, we try to do things like this by giving them something new. Guess what the something new is? We'll give them a device. We'll give them a telephone. We'll give them, we'll give them a, a iPad. We'll give them a computer and think that that's actually going to help. Oh, you know what else we'll do? They're failing, so we'll just put them in a group. A kid that disengages, guess what they do when they get into a group? If they get into a group, they're going to figure out a way to get the person that's doing the 99% to do it anyway. Or they're going to figure out a way to go somewhere else, and when it's all done, they come back to us. Fair doesn't mean giving every child the same thing. It means giving every child what they need. And if we're not giving every child what they need, then we are truly failing our students. Do you know that some of your kids sit in the classroom not because they can't see, but when we're talking math, these are the pictures that they see? The math to them is blurry. They can't see anything. They're trying to make it out, but they can't make it out. But we have to be like the Wizard of Oz, Toto in the Wizard of Oz. We have to pull the curtain back. And when we pull this curtain back, we can expose those things that our kids are struggling with and get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is we have to change our style. And so when we change our style, I know when I go to the, the, the eye doctor, they say, is it better at one? Is it better at two? How about three? How about four? What about A? What about C? What about B? Is it better? And we have to continue to do that because if we're going to differentiate instruction, we have to tailor our instruction to our individual students' needs. Woo, differentiated instruction goes a long way, long way. Can your students imagine sitting on a sky, sitting on above a skyscraper on a little thin thing eating lunch? Can they imagine that? If they can't imagine it, we may want to differentiate our instruction because every student ought to be able to imagine that. Look at these teams, they're celebrating. They're ce did they win? Did they win? Look like they did. In our classroom, that's what it looked like. We have kids that are celebrating, but why are they celebrating? Because in these pictures, guess what happened? They didn't win. What, why, why were they celebrating? They were celebrating for the moment. They were celebrating the fact that we gave them an iPad. We gave them a cell phone that they could use in their class. But they still didn't learn anything. What happens when our kids get out? Whether it's in college, whether it's in high school, whether it's in middle school, whether it's elementary, and you ask them, what are you successful at? And their response is taking tests. Wow. 
But you know what we're trying to do? We're trying to build national champions. It doesn't matter that we're talking about basketball in these pitches. What we're trying to do is when our kids leave, whether it's from college, whether it's in the military, we want our kids to be successful. And if our kids aren't successful, then we have to look back at ourselves and ask, did we differentiate? Did we tailor our instructions to each one of the kids? And Mr. Bear, I just want to let you know, yes, the University of North Carolina did win the men, but the University of South Carolina women's basketball won the women's. Thank you, y'all have a great day.